The iPad has always played an important role in my life. I remember when Steve Jobs unveiled the first one back in 2010, and as an 11 year old kid at the time, this device was everything. Ever since then, I've always been an iPad guy, but it wasn't until 2018 when Apple gave us what I like to call the real first generation iPad Pro that I started to look at this device differently and more like a computer. I am an iPad guy, and I rely on it just as much as the Mac, and I've been quoted saying that the iPad can be a laptop replacement, and I still stand by by that quote, but I think it's important for me to explain what exactly I mean by that. Way back in the day, we only had desktop computers, but then laptops started to come around, but they weren't as full fledged and capable as desktop computers. You still need to have that home PC. Fast forward to today, now, and laptops are fully capable of replacing desktops, and most people choose this route. So, in looking at the iPad, it is currently in the original laptop state from back in the day. It's not meant or trying to replace the desktop. It's meant to be a mobile version of it. The iPad to me is the perfect notebook. I mean, like literally the perfect notebook. And I think that's the best way to frame the iPad. It's a notebook. It's not a desktop. It's a mobile computer. And it's a pretty damn good one at that. The iPad Pro is the first device I pick up every single day and the one I tend to use the most. Almost everything I do on my Mac, I can do on this M4 iPad Pro. And like, seriously, I can do all my admin work from Word docs, PDF management, email, channel analytics, you know, office admin type of stuff. And then I can seamlessly transition into the creative stuff too. So writing scripts, research, doing video outlines, working on wallpapers, editing photos, and even working on design projects if I need to. I'm 24, working full time and a solo content creator. So when it comes to any business or admin stuff, I am the one that's handling it all. As my channels slowly grow and life becomes busier and busier, I've been leaning on the iPad to keep me on track and organized, well, well most of the time, and I rely on a handful of apps to do so. Things 3 is an app that I use for my to-do list, and this is basically where I store my whole life, and without it, I would most definitely fall apart. I featured Things 3 on the channel many times, and it's a solid to-do list app, and it's become second nature to me. I've even got a Siri shortcut on the home screen to quickly jot things down and make it easier to add new tasks. I really can't stress the importance of using a to-do list app, especially for me as I'm trying to live that creative life, and being able to break my life down into different sections and areas just helps me stay organized even when everything starts to feel like a mess. But as much as I use Things 3, email is where I spend a good chunk of my time with the iPad, and I am still currently using Spark as my email client, and it offers some really good inbox organization, which is something that I value most. When it comes to notes, I'm not much of a note taker, and the app I choose to do so probably is going to explain that most. For all my notes, I'm using IA Writer, and this app has been with me for a few years now. This app lets me focus on whatever it is I'm typing out, or better yet, speaking, as most of the times I just tend to speak out my thoughts and let it all flow out with dictation. With that comes a bunch of jumbled up and unorganized text, so to fix this, I just head into ChatGPT and then ask it to spell check and organize my text. From there, I copy it, paste it back into IA Writer, and then go in and edit the text a little bit more just to polish it off. Whether it's a YouTube script or just a simple IG caption or anything in between, it's IA Writer, Dictation, and ChatGPT. This is why I find myself using the iPad Pro so much more over the last few months though, as I've really been trying to up the content creation and take it more seriously and eventually turn it into something more sustainable. I really just love to create videos and I also love to just talk and nerd out about tech, but as I've been doing this, I find myself doing more and more business and admin and just office style work. This is why the iPad is my go-to device for all this though. I find myself being able to be way more focused, zoned in, and ultimately more productive than even I would be over on my Mac. The reason why is because the iPad is not your traditional computer. It's not supposed to be a multitasking powerhouse. Like when it comes to stage manager, for example, I don't use it. And to be honest, I kind of hate it. I don't want or like floating windows on the iPad. The slide over and split screen way of multitasking allows me to stay focused on what I'm currently working on. I like the simplicity of it. It's one of the reasons why I choose to use the iPad over anything else when it comes to writing, research, or really any admin type of tasks. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that each app takes up the entire screen and removes all other distractions. This alone makes such a big difference compared to Stage Manager. IA Writer on the left, Safari on the right, and then Music, Email, Files, and Things 3 in Slide Over. That's all I need. It's this level of simplicity and function that keeps me so productive when working on the iPad, even with just how smooth and fluid it works. 
When it comes to accessories, I keep it pretty minimal and only use a handful of accessories to really maximize the iPad experience. And the first two accessories are from the sponsor of this video, ESR. The first is the shift magnetic case, and this thing is all about versatility. It's got six unique modes, so whether I'm watching a movie, typing a script, or working on wallpapers, it's got me covered with stable angles and adjustable viewing positions. You get this really nice elevated landscape position, which makes for a great stand and is perfect for watching movies. Of course, you can go for just the regular landscape mode as well. And then there's a portrait position and you can change the angles of these positions by adjusting the back flap with the magnetic grooves. You get typing and drawing angles, which give you nice recline positions when it comes to drawing, writing or typing on the iPad itself. The detachable magnetic back case has some really nice bumper protection, all the buttons are covered, and you also have access to your speaker holes, and yes, you can still attach your Apple Pencil Pro magnetically to your iPad. But what really blew me away was this new paper field magnetic screen protector, and if you're into note taking or drawing, this is a must have. It mimics the feel of real paper, making it incredibly satisfying to use with your Apple Pencil Pro. The specially treated surface creates just the right amount of friction, transforming your iPad into something that feels as if you're using using a pencil and paper. Plus, it's super easy to attach and remove thanks to these strong magnetic edges. I mean, you, you gotta love magnets. So when you need to write or draw something, just place the screen protector on. And then when you wanna switch back to that crystal clear OLED display, just simply take it off. It's that easy. And side note, it also works perfectly with screen protectors as well. So you can use both at the same time. If you're interested in boosting your productivity and the experience on your iPad, then head over to the first link in the description and huge thanks to ESR for sponsoring this video. When it comes to the Apple Pencil or Pencil Pro, it hasn't found much of a significant place in my daily routine, despite my dual roles as a graphic designer and content creator. While I'm not much of an artist or a note taker, I still have a few practical use cases for the Pencil Pro. The tool switching squeeze gesture is mapped to a Siri shortcut to activate my home kit lights, using scribble instead of typing, marking up, or signing PDFs, and my favorite use case is swiping up diagonally from the bottom left corner of the iPad to take a screenshot. Whenever if I see something cool or interesting, I just quickly take a screenshot and scribble down any ideas that come to mind. The most important accessory for me though is the Magic Keyboard. It has been the key to unlocking my iPad's versatility and it's what turns it into a laptop. The build quality is amazing with the new aluminum housing, we finally now have a function row, and the new haptic trackpad is the same as the MacBook trackpad. The typing experience is on a whole nother level. I can seriously type on this thing all day and night and never get tired of it. It's easily my favorite keyboard. The design has slightly changed with this new model and I do like how everything feels more pushed back because it gives you more of a palm rest and it also feels a lot more spacious. Being creative is of course a huge part of my life and on the iPad there are only a handful of use cases and apps to utilize. The first thing I do is what I'm doing actually right now which is talking to you, talking to the camera, just ultimately filming a roll. I use the iPad a lot in this situation as I have it just off to the side and I use this as my actual viewfinder for my camera and then I also have IA writer open to read any notes or read my script. As a solo creator, efficiency is key and the tools that speed up your workflow are essential and this is why I use Canva. I use Canva to create my thumbnails or give me inspiration and also create social stories. At the moment, I've been using Canva to create and design my media kit which tells potential brands and sponsors who I am, my demographic, and analytics. It's been great using the iPad to gather all the information I need and then just throw it all into a template and make it look good. Another creative app I use on the iPad is Photomator. This is my photo editing app of choice and I absolutely love it. It's from the team over at Pixelmator and they have really nailed this app. There are so many powerful features and they really take advantage of Apple Silicon and this is also where I created the LUT for my videos. So all my photos and videos match perfectly because I use the same camera and then the exact same color adjustments giving me my own signature look. To be quite honest, that's really it when it comes to doing anything creatively on the iPad. Although it can handle many creative applications and workflows, I find myself glued to the Mac for most of my creative tasks. I do a lot of video editing, and while Final Cut is available on the iPad, and I have tried it out, I'm just so used to the Mac. There's more I can do, and it just feels so much more natural, but 
that's okay. I don't really see the iPad as a video editing powerhouse and I just don't need it to be. However, the iPad still does play a really crucial role when I'm working at the desk setup. When I'm working on the Mac, I keep the iPad close by using Sidecar. Sidecar is a feature that allows you to turn your iPad into an external monitor for your Mac. For my setup, I plug it in via USB-C into my Mac Studio so I can charge the iPad and ensure a stable connection. The best thing about this setup though is the new tandem OLED display found on the M4 iPad Pro. When I need to to review my images or do any color grading or touch things up, I can rely on the iPad to give me the best picture possible. But Sidecar isn't just for my creative purposes. Anytime I'm just at the setup in general, I always have the iPad available as my second display. It's just super convenient. For me though, the iPad isn't meant to be confined to a desk. Its compact form factor and versatility make me want to use it in tons of different places, whether it's just sitting on the couch, going outside, or at a coffee shop. So what happens when I am away from the Mac and I need to do something that only the Mac can do. Well, that's where this important app called Screens 5 comes into play. Screens 5 is a remote desktop application that allows you to log in and control your Mac remotely as long as you have an internet connection. This app lets me bring my Mac Studio anywhere and everywhere that I go. And if I want to do some video editing, I just log on to my Mac. If I need a file or need to do something that would just be quicker to do on the Mac, I just log in. All the keyboard shortcuts, function row, and trackpad gestures work, and you can even go ahead and use your finger as a cursor if you wanted to. To. It truly feels like I'm natively using my Mac Studio, it's seamless, and the connection is always rock solid. I know this kind of setup isn't for everyone though, and I'm not suggesting it solves the limitations of iPadOS, but for me, I'm very happy with this workflow. This setup gives me the best of both worlds. I use the iPad as my notebook for administrative and small creative tasks, and when I need to do something more serious or accomplish more, I just remotely log into my Mac Studio and get that work done. I just wish the screen could be utilized a little better on the iPad, but the iPad is not your typical 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so there really isn't no workaround for this. I know this video has been full of positives about the iPad, but it's not perfect. It's not even close to being perfect. There are so many problems and so many limitations when it comes to the iPad, and it's not the hardware. The hardware is some of the best Apple pushes out of any of their devices in their lineup. It's the software that continues to be the problem and the limitation. To be 100% completely honest with you though, I'm okay with iPadOS. I don't need that much more out of it. And I think that comes down to the fact that I've used the iPad since 2018. I've already made it a laptop-like device. I found the right apps and I found the right services that work for me in my workflow. But a huge factor is also, like I stated in the beginning of this video, the laptop replaces the desktop and the iPad replaces the laptop and becomes a notebook. And since I have a desktop Mac, I have a desktop home computer. I don't need a laptop and that's why the iPad just fits my workflow so easily. Anyways, that's it for me. I know this video was like all over the place, but this is just ultimately how I use the iPad and some of my thoughts about the iPad and its current state. But what I want to know is how do you use the iPad? Is it a device that you legitimately use and it's a computer and it's actually something that you can rely on? Or is it just a fancy device to watch shows and movies on and just play games? I think both sides are valid, so I really want to chat about it in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a like and share it to a friend. And if you like Apple tech or desk setup related content, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, peace.